Okay, I heard all the profile pictures have been <laughs> taken. So we'll actually get back on track with the timing because there was some time allocated for that after this presentation. But it's fantastic that we had this opportunity to uh, have the profile pictures taken, as you'll see why. So this morning, earlier, I gave you in, like, an overview of how to think about social media from a strategic point of view and a very brief overview to some of the main channels. But what we're going to look at now is in detail LinkedIn and not even the whole of LinkedIn, just one <coughs> part of LinkedIn. And you'll see how in-depth you can go with social media. So we're just going to look at the LinkedIn profile and uh, how, how that can help you. So it's very much focused on you as individuals. We talked a lot about brands and organizations before, but now it's nice to get very personal. So LinkedIn is actually one of the oldest uh, social networks. May 2003, and it's also one of the biggest. So, getting close to, uh, to more than 200 million users in 200 countries. And in Finland alone, there's nearly half a million, which is pretty good for the size of the country. So, this is a very quick overview. Each one of these, I'm going to go into some detail. So this is like a flash things of what private users can do. So it's, LinkedIn is well known as kind of being an online CV resume uh, space. And we, the, relatively speaking, the social networking capabilities of LinkedIn are quite new. It's not so long ago that they added the page, like the Facebook page, and some of the s improving the status, updating those kind of things. So profiles can be searched, contact requests can be made. You can see how you're connected to people. You can look for jobs and companies can look for candidates. You can post and read status updates. You can follow companies and get notifications <laughs> from them. You can search and save for jobs you'd like to apply to. And they've been introducing more and more the recommendation endorsing features. And you can join discussion groups. So let's, uh, if some of you have laptops, if you have your LinkedIn uh, open, I will try to leave pauses so you can actually do stuff as we talk. So these are the things. The profile in LinkedIn has been sort of mostly about current and previous jobs, education, recommendation contacts. But all the time, they're adding new features all the time they're adding new capabilities and some of those are really nice and interesting but from a higher level perspective I think it's really good to think about this idea of keywords and this is very much CV writing to some extent um, but particularly important in LinkedIn gets even more important so these keywords are the sort of the core message you wish to convey so when people read through your profile, you want to create like an impression of what you're about, what are your core skills, what are you trying to achieve in your career. So here in my summary, I've made a reference social media, of course, communications, community management, collaboration, content marketing. Um, very deliberate because these are core to my profession. I'm not saying I've used my profile. I'm not saying it's the best ever. <laughs> But it's, of course, easier to work with the one I know and what, what I've been doing. So you need to think about what are these key words that you want to. When somebody reads your LinkedIn profile, what are they going to get from it? And the keywords are also important because it's part of the search engine optimization. LinkedIn has its own kind of search engine optimization, and it looks for these keywords as well. And that's important if you want to be discovered uh, for certain skills. So that search really uses the <coughs> uh, yeah, the skills, the, the skills you list and the text and stuff, it adds them together. I, it, it would put more weighting towards the specific skills you've put in your profile, but it, it pays attention to what you've written as well. Okay. How much, I can't say exactly. So also along with skills, you can put t key keywords, for example, like within your profession, there might be specific skill sets that you have related to certain types of technology or something. So in this case, I put like Yammer, LinkedIn, Twitter. Those are mentioned in the profile. So if somebody's looking for help in the, with those specific tools. 
Now there is a, a bit of debate about, um, traditionally we've had this situation where CVs have been quite sort of dry to some extent. They're a list of the things you've done and the things you've achieved and the skills you have. And then you had the uh, supporting letter where you made it more personal. But in LinkedIn, it's kind of a hybrid situation of those two. Uh, so it, it is a social space. So in a way that it's, it's, more, it's okay to be more um, personal. The other, other problem with inverted commas problem with a LinkedIn profile is unlike a traditional CV which you could tailor for different jobs, you can't do that with LinkedIn, it's the one space. So what you have to do is uh, think about what's the core target audience you're trying to reach with your LinkedIn profile. And that's very much related to where you want to go with your career and your profession. So if you want to head in a certain direction, you have to tweak your profile to make you stand out as a good person to go in that direction. So it's, all, it's really like a marketing document. And what I think interesting now, I'll explain about how you can make your LinkedIn totally public. And I don't know about you, but how many people here, if they're going to meet somebody for the first time, would actively look for their profile on LinkedIn? So more than half, <coughs> not, not, not in the context of interviewing because that's illegal, but just in general, uh, you're going to meet somebody, hey, I want to know a little bit what the hell they've been up to in their past. So if you type their name and put LinkedIn, like really so often that comes out straight away at the top is their LinkedIn profile, comes up high up. And it's a really great way to quickly, so it's becoming a kind of necessity. And, and you can actually start to think, this morning we talked about everything you do in social media should point to a landing page. And from your personal, professional career, that landing page could be your LinkedIn profile. You could think that's the space I want people to end up going to. When I post something in Facebook, it's people get interested, I want to know more about this person, somehow they link back to the profile. It's a kind of new way of thinking about it. So, yeah, so how can your skills help the, the group you're targeting? It's kind of like I like that way of thinking, how can you help them? It's always good to be <laughs> seen to be thinking in that way, rather than how, what you can get out of them. And yeah, think about the direction you want to go. For, for many people, if, you run, if you're an entrepreneur or, or like a startup, uh, it's as much about your business as it is about you as a person, because you're so closely tied to your, your business. So, that's part of a concern for me when I'm thinking about my LinkedIn. It's like, how does it attract new clients to the business? Not just, how does it, not just how does it promote me as a career? So there's that aspect to it as well. And I, I like this slide because it's, there are absolutely, in some, to some extent, there are absolutely no rules. Uh, and I wouldn't, I'm not <coughs> here to, today to say that there are. So this is a, a friend I used to live with when we were teaching together after graduating. Uh, now he's recently, he's been made head of drama at Tiger Aspect. It's, it's the biggest independent TV production company in the UK. There's, you can't get much higher in that space than this. It's like, and his LinkedIn profile is University of Anglia, producer Tiger Aspect, executive producer. He hasn't even updated the fact now he's head of drama. And uh, if you're within if you're within TV drama in the UK, within that circle, you don't need to say anything else. Producer at Tiger Aspect is like, tells everything to people in that industry. So you think he doesn't have to, he's targeting very specific people and in a very small kind of environment. So, so it works for him. But the reality is, it's probably, I don't know many more people more successful than this in my life. Um, but so the reality for most of us is that we might, we're kind of more, how should I put it? Not necessarily as dynamic and as successful. So we have to, we have to use LinkedIn as best we can to help us to, to advantage. So how can we do that? Well, we can like start playing with the various uh, options we have. So most of you, if you find up in the top right-hand corner, there's this settings, and you can do most things from there. One thing I, I, I recommend, this is a really nice tip. Very few people, I doubt, are consistent about updating their LinkedIn on a kind of regular basis. 
I think most people, what would happen is like, what I do is you, many months go by and suddenly you freak out and say, hey, I really should <coughs> do some work on my LinkedIn profile. It might even be a year. So what happens then is you start modifying your jobs and tweaking and stuff and making changes. And all the time you're doing that, it's sending out these automated broadcasts. So suddenly you're spamming people with, <laughs> with like all this stuff that's actually happened six months ago. So the, the trick then is to turn, to turn off the activity broadcast, especially when you're doing a, a big chunk of editing of your profile. Turn it off. By all means, turn it back on again uh, afterwards, but turn it off at least whilst you're doing the editing. Yeah, this, this kind of things you get appearing, you send to people, Richard updated profile, honors and experience, Richard updated this, da da da, da and that, that's kind of... I think if this is a personal choice, you really have to decide what you want to get out of LinkedIn, and if you're really serious about using it as a tool to promote yourself, <coughs> it kind of doesn't make sense if you're hiding it, in, in my opinion. There are situations where it, it might, but... So in order to not to take it from being hidden, you have to make it uh, viewable to everyone. And this means when people are searching to find out more about you, they can see your profile without having to connect. Uh, and this makes you much more visible. And also it means you're more accessible to the other search engines in Google and stuff. You see, uh, hopefully I'm not going so fast that you, if you want to find these things. And by all means, help each other as well if someone's struggling to find a setting. So, uh, how many people were already set to totally public? And was that deliberate? Because I think the default is that it's not uh, so on public mode, so you have to actively change yeah. it. Um, <coughs> and if you're in the business of, I think you should do this anyway, if you're, not, if you're public or, or not, you should customize your URL so that it looks nice with your name. Otherwise, it's just a, like a long string of numbers. Uh, and if you customize the URL, so you can go to settings, uh, edit your public profile, and then down here, you customize your URL. It means that you have a nice, tidy looking link that you can start to use then much more effectively. You can put it in your email signature when you send out emails. You can reference it on your blog where you have your contact profile information. You can just start to make much more use of it. So I think everybody should do that. You can, with similar, in a similar way to Facebook, you can control a lot of what people can see. And in this section, customize your public profile. You can, it's something you can do in your own time later. You can see all the different elements that you would wish people to be able to see. And that's, that's just very much a personal choice. <coughs> we discussed this at the end of the last session. It's a very good point. Whilst, I mean, whilst you're in this setting section, there is an option with the click of a button, you can link your LinkedIn status updating to your Twitter. And as I, I, think, I think this is OK because, because the for those who weren't here earlier, the context of LinkedIn is, is very much about professional and things, and Twitter is still predominantly about professional related for many people. So, and the chances are that your LinkedIn followers are not going necessarily going to be Twitter followers, and things on Twitter disappear quite quickly. Whereas one of the one of the current advantages of LinkedIn that makes it quite nice is the status messages stay longer and they're more visible. In Twitter, they can they can go very far. So. I think at the moment it's, it's certainly okay to. And what happens is that when you, every time you create a status in LinkedIn, if you have this button turned on, it will ask you, you have option to say only LinkedIn, only, uh, or, or both. So you can choose, there are some posts you can make, because if the post is longer, you won't be able to share it with Twitter anyway. So one of the best things you can do, which we had this great that people could come here today and get an uh, update their profile or get a, a well shot profile. It, if you have a nice profile photo, it kind of <coughs> inspires you to do the rest of your profile in a, in a more nice way. A 
think this was a, in research related LinkedIn. This was really kind of a, a fun, fun thing. It's able to track and analyze um, words used within the profiles. So it's just, this is these are like in 2000. And I think this was can't remember last year. I think um, words used a lot in people's profiles: creative, organizational, effective, extensive experience, track record, motivated, <laughs> innovative, problem solving, communication skills, dynamic. Now the thing you have to be wary of, and I think this goes back to normal CB writing as well, is that you have to be very careful of using these buzzwords. Because then if you use these buzzwords, you end up something sounding like this. I'm creative, organized, effective, with extensive experience and a great track record. I'm motivated, innovative, and love problem solving. I have fantastic communication skills and love working for a dynamic, results-orientated company that values a team player, self-starter like me, who is a world class and multitasking. <laughs> Plus, I'm crazy about buzzwords. Now, the problem with this is it. Uh, on, a, on a surface level, it sounds like, I, I read that to my wife and she said, oh my God, that's my profile. <laughs> so like, it, it sounds great, but actually, it doesn't actually say anything. It's just personal opinions. So instead of just giving these kind of personal opinions, it's much, much better to think about using active verbs. Now, the, using active verbs like accomplished, budgeted, chaired, designed, edited, with, by default, specify something you did, achieved. And I think if you use these active verbs, without even knowing why, when people read your profile, it will be more dynamic and more uh, give a better impression, even if people don't understand why, than the kind of classic buzzword thing. Um, so I, I, as I say, mine's not perfect, but I've tried to use. I, I co-founded, uh, and, and I used these words to actually describe things I did. We, we started, we engaged, and... You can search actually on the website. You can search active verbs on the web if you want to get ideas for them. And these active verbs also help you be very concrete. And what, one thing I really love in it's relatively new. It's not been used by so many people yet in LinkedIn. They have this projects capability uh, feature, and you can assign specific projects to specific jobs you've done. So within one job, you can have like two or three core projects you did whilst doing that job. And, and the beauty of that is it's much easier to be concrete in a job, in a project description than it is in your kind of overall thing. So within this project, which we did for the Ministry of Employment and Economy there, Oscar umbrella uh, for the industry umbrellas, I, I personally gave like 15 collaboration training workshops for that. And that's associated with my job at Civic Park. So. Of course, there is, the, there is the aspect of listing jobs. I just took this from a friend who's in HR. She's an HR professional, so I thought that she should have some idea of how to write. So, so th yeah, the point is just to have some short, concrete description of every job you've done. Actually, I've got the projects up, up here again. Um, skip that. That's the other, the other side of, so that kind of covers the resume side of the CV side of uh, LinkedIn. And the other kind of core part of LinkedIn is networking. There are some interesting new features. Has, has anybody come across this new, well, it's relatively new. I actually think it's really quite interesting because within your skills and expertise uh, section of your profile, you can list these specific skills that you want to be associated with. And I think the search will pay more attention to these because these are the things you've specifically chosen. But what I think... Somebody else has chosen for you. Can, can people add... The, I mean, the, the yeah. skills that you choose within your profile. Well, uh, people can, can they? Them. They can specifically yeah. add them. Yeah. To, okay, cool. That's, as I say in the beginning of this, this morning, I always learn something. <laughs> There's always something new in things changing. But what's quite interesting here is I, I had put some time back, I can't remember when, but I put user experience as a skill. And I know something about user ex experience, but if I'm being totally honest, I'm not a user experience expert uh, by, by any means. But and this is quite interesting because my network confirms that. Nobody is like endorsing me like, for user experience, 
So, but some people are endorsing me for social media and social media marketing and startups, so that's, that's fine. So I think that there is a, a lot of debate about this in the sense that <coughs> this kind of crowdsourcing rating can be problematic in the sense that it becomes easier for people to endorse you for stuff that other people have been endorsing. So that can be a kind of reinforcing feedback mechanism which is problematic potentially. But it, on the whole I think it's quite accurate. And y within uh, this section, Skills and Expertise, you can search it's in the more at the top menu, skills and expertise. You can search for people based on these particular skills. Uh, and uh, and uh, from what I've seen, I, I think, it's, again, it brings up people who I recognize as being respected for their space. It's always some discussion, usually, in when we talk about LinkedIn, like, and also with Facebook as well, to some extent, but particularly with LinkedIn, how many people should I connect with? Uh, there are, for most people, 500 is the plus is the limit that LinkedIn will show. There are some exceptions, and again, this is something I learned relatively new recently. There are certain super influencers who LinkedIn displays the total, but most normal, I don't know how they become registered as super influencers, I'm not sure, but for most people 500 is the limit. And the, 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 the line of argument is that if you want to be seen to be an influencer for whatever reason, if that's your, in your profession, if you're in marketing or whatever, <coughs> it's good to have 500 plus. But there's also a line of thought that it's better to cultivate more meaningful relationships. And I think most people end up in somewhere in the middle. They will use some personal kind of guide to who they accept in LinkedIn. Who they usually a lot of people will use some kind of rule like, I've met them in real life, or they are connected to someone I respect. Because whenever you see a new person, you can see in LinkedIn, you, if you look in the bottom left, you can see they're connected to people in your networks. So if somebody asks to be part of my network, and I see that they're already friends or connections with three or four other people in, uh, I respect, then yeah, it's cool, they can come in. But if there's no connections, I've never met them, then I'm a bit like cautious. <coughs> they, did a, they did a survey of the CEOs of the top Fortune 500 companies, and if I remember rightly, the average LinkedIn connection there was like 300, 350. And these like people top of their game. So they're not just trying to get the 500 plus just because they can. They could of course, they could easily get the 500 plus. But the guy, uh, Reid Hoffman, is the co-founder of LinkedIn. He's just read, wrote, wrote this book, and I was listening to him talk about it on the radio. And, and he says that, again, like I mentioned with Twitter, th there's so much uh, data and connection bombardment. He won't basically have a meeting with anybody who he can't connect with somebody else in his network. So if there's no connection in his network, he, w he, won't, he hasn't got time. He just doesn't have the time. So he uses his network as a filter to decide who he should meet with and who he should connect with. Uh, most of us aren't so pressured for time that that's the situation. But just like Twitter can be used to filter information, use your s network. <coughs> and actually, it's also part of this book is all about how in this day and age where we don't have steady jobs for life, we have to, as individuals, we have to think much more like startup of one, promote ourselves, be active, promoting. We can't just sit back and hope for the best. And that's, again, part of the theme for these two workshops, using social media to promote yourself as a startup of one kind of thing. Um, you can do all kinds of searches which you can save. So I've got one here, social media. And um, it's quite a useful search because I c once a week, I think, or once every two weeks, I get an email that lists a bunch of people who are coming up under social media. And the reason why I have that on is that our ambition is to grow and finding good, experienced social media cons experts, consultants, is quite hard, actually, because many of those people are working within big companies. So Valio has its own community manager very, very experienced contemporary of mine from Media Lab, 
one of the best in Finland, but he's working totally full-time for Valio. And then you have people working full-time for Nokia. For so a lot of the good social media people are, are actually employed full-time. So finding in the freelance, so I, I need to keep constantly on the lookout for who might be good to approach as we grow. So that's, that's why I have it. And, I'm, and other companies might be doing similar, looking for people. And you can get down to really like advanced level when looking for people, their job level, what they're interested in, groups, that kind of thing. These are things you just can play with. And to some extent, it, if you're willing to pay, it gives you some basic level information about who's been looking at you. But if you pay for the premium, you can see all the people, if that's really important to you. But it's quite expensive, um, like 30 euros a month. You really have to have a very good reason to use the premium features. I don't <coughs> yet, personally. So other things you can do in LinkedIn. How many people have been getting the LinkedIn today email? I, I just found it, it just came. I don't remember subscribing to it, but it's basically aggregated news and it, it looks at what your contacts have been sharing, what's been liked, what's been promoted, and it lists things that it thinks you should be interested in. So it comes as a, news, as a newsletter email. And to be honest, I occasionally click on it, and I'm quite surprised. I would say the majority of stuff that it recommends, I, I generally find, if not useful, interesting, relative to my interests. I think it's one of the be best in my experience. And you can, you can click, you can sign up for it, but mine just came on automatically. And now we're getting the status updates from contacts as well. Groups, the groups have been around in LinkedIn a long time. Um, there are a lot of groups you can join. There are some, there are, there are successful groups, but there's a lot of kind of fragmented and unhealthy groups as well. It takes a lot of, if you're thinking of starting a group, you really have to be willing to commit there, as we talked about earlier this morning about the role of a community manager being a chair person. A group is like a 24-7 uh, meeting, kind of. And if you don't have somebody, especially in the early days, being very active, taking the role of chair community manager for that group, it's very likely it will just fizzle out and die. You really need someone committed to. And th there has to be a very clear reason why that group exists. Um, we, which, we, what's the name of your organization? I can't say it to you. Technology firm. This is, was Swedish speaking within TechOcore originally, but expanding it. But, but it was quite interesting because they have a LinkedIn group, and I was asking about it. <coughs> and that LinkedIn group is primarily for sharing information about upcoming events that are, re are relevant to alumni and students. And, and, and that was really interesting <coughs> because, inverted commas, they, they defined a use case, the business case for having a LinkedIn group. They were, and they're not expecting like long discussions, active discussions. That's not expected, so people understand the context of that group and it works. Um, quite often, to be honest, people, I think, a lot of the time, <coughs> they join a group, they, they read it for a bit and then they forget about it, but it's still kind of, um, your groups show up like badges. So if you want to show your professional affiliations, groups are kind of like, Badges telling people kind of the communities you're interested in, even if you're not going there, which is not a necessarily a good or a bad thing. But if a group, for example, this uh, Finnish high tech startup community, I've noticed over the years that's a very active group. And the reason why I think it's so successful is that it's serving a very specific purpose. It's providing like very specific information that's not readily available in one source. It's Finnish, it's startups, and it's like so, if there is a clear, if, there's, if you're providing content and generating content with that group that's unique and can't be got anywhere else, people will make the effort. But if, the, if it's just, if there's not enough value, they won't make the effort. One relatively new feature as well is they have this uh, kind of who to follow recommendation. And I found there's some really uh, interesting people they <coughs> recommend. You can get some great uh, people from that. So that's just something to play with.
One thing that differentiates very much LinkedIn from your traditional CV, it's a fun thing, is that you can embed online media content. So if you have any slide uh, presentations in SlideShare or videos or anything else that's somewhere online, it's r really easy nowadays to add. But actually, I think now it's, uh, it's tough. Yeah. It's from LinkedIn for a while. It's, it's, a, it's a good point. I'm coming to that what there is it's not available to well it depends I'll explain who it's available for at the moment if some of the, how many people have can see in their LinkedIn profile in relation to the summary or a job or a project this button here it's like a little TV with a plus can uh, does anybody see it no. um, it's not available for everybody yet because um, the reason why those who have it are those people who in the past it used to be the case that if you wanted to put SlideShare presentations in LinkedIn, you had to add the SlideShare app. If you wanted to integrate Twitter, you had to add a, tw uh, a specific <coughs> app. So people in the past who've done that, uh, uh, LinkedIn has made it possible. So I, I did that in the past. So I have this nice button where I can, I just click that and I just add a link from anywhere on the web. And it automatically creates the box the video, the slide chain, it just does everything automatically and it, it works really well. It is coming, it, this is uh, information explaining about the rollout of the media linking feature. It is coming to everybody. They don't specify when it will be available to everybody. So keep an eye out for it because especially if my past c uh, career was in filmmaking so it's really nice because before I was kind of like Bloody la -de -la, bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. It, it, that's how it could sound because my films haven't been in cinemas, but now I can put my films in there <laughs> and I know people can see if it, they can watch the film if they like it, they like it, <laughs> whatever. But it's really useful for people in the media. You can't do it before. <coughs> I think like this uh, aspect of combining the kind of letter with the CV is when you start putting things like the volunteer experience and causes, this is where you can get much more personal and share things you've been doing outside of your core work. So for me, I put the, because I never, it's been a voluntary project, the shadow election, no one's ever got paid for it. This is, I put this, and it's also, we're using social media so much in that project that I think it relates really closely to my core professional activities. And of course, it's always good to try to reinforce with everyone's somehow impressed with if you can put some awards or honors. <coughs> and they even have uh, like things, they have like a published feature where you can put things you've been published, where you've been published, books, magazines, that kind of thing. There is uh, contacts. One of the main things to be, we, we discuss this sometimes, uh, it's very standard that people will use the same email. Like this is, I actually had this, I was making, I was using, this was my same email I used to sign in to LinkedIn. And that, that was bad. And actually this is something, as I say, I learned from somebody attending a workshop. They pointed that out to me. I hadn't thought about it. And LinkedIn has in the past been hacked. It's quite rare. I think it was, it was only one major hacking they've had, but it gives people half the puzzle if you use the same email. So try to use a, a different email in the contact than you use for signing into LinkedIn. And whether you put your whether you put your phone number or not is really up to you. Uh, I put it because we're running a. I need the leads for the company. So I see the phone is really important, people can call. And you can put your other social media profiles there. So, um, this, is, this is occasional has benefits. So you can, there are sometimes situations where you still need whatever reason to send uh, a printed version of your CV and, and what we used especially in the early days of Zippy Pop a lot because we were actually doing app and development and we were applying to a lot of competitions and funding things especially like and 
we, just, we, we made it clear to everybody in the team that when we apply for funding, uh, when we enter competitions, that often they request the CVs of the key people involved. It's quite common, like it's techist applications, things like that. But it's too tedious to chase everybody. So we just said, we're going to use your PDF from your LinkedIn <laughs> every time we make one of these things. So we didn't have to worry about like, checking if people's stuff is up to date. So we just, so ha it can have a very specific use. There is, uh, there is a section, I didn't put the link, I should put the link, but I'll try to add the link before we share, but there is a section where you can generate your own LinkedIn profile buttons. So as I said, if you want to make the LinkedIn profile your landing space for to send people to f to promote your career, you can create a nice button with some embedded code and put that in your blog or your website. I think the status updates in LinkedIn tend, as we say, it's very, we were talking earlier about context and of different spaces, and the context of LinkedIn is still very much like professional. And with, with this, this, this society I was mentioning earlier, they have a situation where there's a challenge because the, they've been putting their like weekly party activities, events, the kind of in the Facebook but more like the professional stuff in the LinkedIn and some people were saying that, the, that they would like to see uh, some of the parties and things. But you have to make a choice. You have to decide what is your core audience in the different space. So in that situation, the core audience is the, could be in the Facebook page that it's the active students who are students now and the core audience in the LinkedIn space is also uh, alumni plus companies. So there it's you can tweak your context, it, the content in relation to the context. And, and it's, it's something you have to experiment with. As I was also talking that we're doing, the, we're gradually transitioning that LinkedIn page will be more where we talk about the social business collaboration side of what we do, and the Facebook page will be more about the marketing and the consumer side of what we do. So slightly tweaking the context, but a lot of that content is relevant to both, so we share it across. Yeah, that's, that's back on time, 12. <laughs> um, yeah, so any questions about LinkedIn specifically or anything to do with social media that we talked about this morning? In the sense, I think it's always good to be to the point for each section. But as long as you, you're to the point, I don't think, because people can scroll down, so they don't have to read everything. If they, <laughs> if they get past, they're still interested. Uh, I think one thing that's, again, this is similar to normal CV writing in the sense that you, there comes a point when you start your career, you know, you're listing, like, I worked in a, a bar for s six months, because you haven't done any other work but it quickly becomes irrelevant whether you worked in a bar or not. So as you go through your career, you edit out the jobs that aren't supporting your, where you want to be. So in that sense, you, like the Tiger Aspect friend, he's only got three. He's done much more than that, but he's only listing three because that's the ones that help him get to where he has got to. So, it, so yeah, so be succinct as, as possible, but of course there's no point in putting um, as I say, too much stuff that doesn't really help that direction where you're going. I think there is actually, I didn't mention it, but there within, the, within your profile contacts, you can list links to other spaces. So you can link a website, you can link a blog. And uh, one thing that I think is quite interesting to, to about that is to not get too worried about whether it's specifically your blog. For example, uh, you could link to a, a, a co corporate website which gives details about a project you were heavily involved in. It's not your website, in, but it reinforces something that you're talking about. So you can, it doesn't, so yeah, a little bit more creative how you link. It's one option to think about. 